Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, we're here joined today by Brad and David from Slap Ball, as well as Wally from Witham. And today we're going to discuss the challenges of an e-commerce project in terms of implementing it. So I'll hand it off to Brad. He's going to discuss the internal resourcing involved and just knowing where to start with the project. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Yeah, I think one of the the, the first stress points, uh, you know, or, or challenges really kicking off um, uh, the process of, of, of building out that e-commerce, um, you know, new storefront, new implementation, you know, project, whatever you want to call it, kind of comes really early. Um, and that's, you know, for someone who's not, you know, focused on, on e-commerce every day, it's figuring out what that team is going to look like, you know, who, who's going to be answering the questions when, um, you know, whether it's a development agency or, or a platform partner or someone comes in and says, all right, let's sit down, let's start talking about what it is that you want to build. What, what, what do you want? What, what are we trying to solve? What are we trying to fix if you, you have a storefront live already? Um, you know, who, who is that person who's going who's gonna to own that? And in a lot of cases, that person isn't there. Um, or, you know, there's two or three people that are all kind of pointing at each other trying to figure out, um, you know, what it takes to figure out. A lot of times what we've seen is a project, you know, a, a storefront project starts off and, and someone, um, you know, ends up filling that role down the line, you know, as things kind of stall and drag out, whether it's, you know, trying to, to get questions answered, maybe it's someone on the ERP side, you know, you've got this really cool, flexible, you know, headless commerce platform, um, but then you also need someone on the ERP side. So when someone says, hey, where does this data live? How can I get to it? Um, how does this, how should this interact? Um, you know, there needs to be someone who can say, oh yeah, you know, I, I, I know the answer to that, or I can find someone. Um, that's, that's always a big challenge. And then from the, from the functionality standpoint, um, especially if it's something new, you know, there's, there's always a, sort of a rush to go out and find a competitor, right? Who's already been there, who's already doing something and say, you know, here's all this stuff that they're doing. I want exactly that. Um, so it's easy to feel really overwhelmed, and you know, I know we've had uh, you know, previous conversations. We sort of talked about starting small, and that's really you know where that is. You know, what's the minimum amount of of functionality? Um, and I know Kim, you've got some experience on the data side, but you know, what's the minim minimal amount of data that we really need to to kick off um, a, a successful project, a successful implementation? Right. So. so when we think of data, um, it, it, it's t we think, oh, it's just this segment of the project, but it really touches every single aspect. Mm -hmm. um, and it re you really need to include data from the beginning. Oftentimes, it, there's a linear path um, that people think, okay, now is the time to address data. You pull it in from the beginning. So um, when we think of data, you really need to analyze what upfront do we have to work with? Is it is data quality good? Um, Oftentimes, the data quality stewardship um, that the company took on actually reflects what resourcing we need to incorporate into the project. Do we need to put more horsepower on the, the client side? Um, or, or do we need to provide more of our own resources depending upon that level? So it helps us take that initial gauge of the project and really set us up for success later on. And the, the other pieces really involved um, the typical extraction, transformation, and loading of the data. Um, but when you really dig deep into it, each process is really um, filled with the need for business decisions. Constantly throughout the process, we're touching base with business owners, and it's not as simple as saying yes or no. There's constant debate, and it's knowing what to filter out for relevancy. And like you mentioned, date, Brad, um, the most what do we need to get into the system today to be able to operate? So it's basically that core minimum functionality, and then afterwards, let's add in. Um, all those little bells and whistles that, that were under debate. Otherwise, you're going to be going this cycle. So it's about priority, I think, with data, mm -hmm. and knowing when the cutoffs are and not trying to boil the ocean. Yeah. And I think this really links to um, the costing of the project too. And I think Dave can kind of marry up those two because with, with data, that, that's really where the hole can be burned with cost if you don't keep that in scope. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, Wally. 
I was thinking, I was thinking maybe I'll just touch on scope and piggyback on the data side, uh, Kim, just for a second. So, you know, on the data side, what's interesting to me is if if we are not thinking of the project itself and and anything, and we're looking at where those data sources are, it's amazing to me as we go in and talk to our customers how little they actually know about their data. This is not everybody. I don't need to blanket everybody, but a lot of our customers really struggle with where their data is and the state of their data. They've been functioning and they're moving along. And yet when we move to a new system, or in this case, add on something to that, and we now expose the data in a different way, we start to really uncover some of the challenges of data. And I think, Kim, you hit the nail on the head. The rigor and attention we need to put to data is, is second to none. We really have to pay attention there. From a um, from a project scope and, and storefront. So even if you were putting together six sites and you know a bigger a, you know a bigger project or you were doing a smaller project, as you piece that together and figure out what do you want to invest in your future, what do you want to invest in this curbside tech, what do you want to invest in sort of your new business model uh, as, as we relate it back to the uh, to the new current state and, and the new way we're all building out business models. How are you going to figure out that project? I think Brad did a nice job of sort of setting up what we need to do and think about. And then when we think of that overall project, David, as we start to look at, you know, the scope of it and the cost of it and the storefront, what are some of the things that you've done with your customers or doing today with your customers? What are some of the ways that for the folks listening to this call, they're not thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to spend all this money, right? How, how, what were some of the ways that you are looking at ways to optimize the investment? Yeah, I think the the important thing is to um, start small. You 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 don't have to like uh, somebody said earlier, boil the ocean here, right? Um, if you sit down, and and I think the other important point to all of this, uh, particularly you know if you're thinking about this from a business owner standpoint, this is not a technology project, right? This is a business. Uh, you know, this is a business project. It, it it needs to be driven by business decisions, right? From you know, financial operations, uh, marketing, right? It, it it's uh, it start there. Uh, don't don't let technology drive this this bus, right? And we find very often that you know clients will say, well, I you know, I've given that to you know the the IT department. They're running running the show. Important part of it. But uh, a lot of this is going to come down to what's going to drive the business, right? So sales, marketing, operations, finance, all of those things. Um, and find out what those small wins are going to be, right? What are those fast wins are that, that, uh, that we can get on the table, we can get out the door quickly, not spend a ton of money, um, and see a huge, you know, huge potential return on. That's where to start. Be agile with that process. You know, launch quickly. Get those wins. You don't have to spend huge money. Um, in order to uh, to see some some real benefits, but understanding you know what are those uh, you know what are those business strategies or what are those business wins that are really going to help help the business. I know we keep we come back to it a few times. This is an example you know with one of our one of our clients who um, really saw a huge issue internally with time and resources being spent on just taking order payments and chasing order payments, getting those online, simple, quick, easy win. Uh, saved a huge amount of time and resources for them internally. You know those kinds of things. Focus on those small, quick wins, um, and you you know you can over time build on those through that kind of agile process, um, and uh, you can really really uh, affect the business um, and and open up that digital channel to to your customers. Uh, you know over time. Love that, Dave. I really love the uh, the way you position that because I don't think. You know that ongoing investment that's required. What what I just heard out of your out of your narrative there is, we don't have to have this big massive project. We can start small and have this ongoing investment. In the end, you may spend whatever your investment strategy is on this overall product, and what, whatever it is you decide that makes business sense for you. But you can start small, have a continuous ongoing forecasted budget, so to speak and keep going and investing into this and growing it as you get there. You build out the sophistication of your team as you do it in this way, which I really liked listening to the way you can get quick wins. Um, and those quick wins lead to success. And when you have success, a little bit of success internally with those projects, they lead to other projects. And then you start to dip your toe, not just in the water, but you actually take a, take a full yeah. dive in the pool. So exactly. Love it. Yeah.